This is by far the simplest and most effective and strongest fence system out there. Let's talk about how to set and place a cedar split rail fence. The very basic idea is you're going to be with any fence, you're gonna be first off figuring out where you're gonna start. So you're gonna have identify a point, this is gonna be where my fence is gonna start. And then you go down there and you figure out exactly where you want that fence to end. And the reason that that's very important is number one, you wanna stay within the bounds of where you want the fence. But number two, you've gotta have those two points if you're gonna make a straight line. So you've got that straight line strung. Now you're going to uh, start placing posts. Our particular system, all wood posts are gonna be pre-drilled and they're gonna come with the post and cut to length and drilled and then you're gonna have a piece of steel T-post that's gonna come with it that's gonna be the right size for the particular fence you're doing. So you're going to drive the steel post in the ground at the beginning point and then you're going to slide this post down over that steel post that you just drove in the ground. Now it's gonna be tight, so you're gonna to have to tap it down a little bit, and you're gonna tap it down to where it's just flush with the ground. Now to, for your second, lay out your second post, you've got your string line, you know what's straight, so you're gonna take a, a rail of that split rail and lay it right here so that the tongue on the end is gonna reach the middle. You're gonna lay that on the ground right down that string line, and then at the far end of that, you can set the other post with the tongue reaching the middle, and then you know exactly where to place your second steel T-post that this post is gonna slide over. All right, so what we're doing is that second, the next post is gonna come off of this notch, okay? So our post is approximately four inches, okay? And so from this outside edge, we want to come in about two inches and the center of our post is going to be the center of this log. So we want two inches. So that two inches is going to go there. Our center of our post is going to go right there. And it's going to be about two inches off of this inside, off of our string. Okay, so right about there, right about there. Two inches is the center of our post both ways. Some of the challenges that you're apt to run into doing a split rail fence is the tongues may not slide past each other and you may have to trim one of those tongues so that it's narrow enough to go in that actual slot. Uh, the second thing is you may run into a situation where the tongue is too long to insert into the this slot correctly. That's very likely to happen on a corner because the corners are only drilled about half as deep as they're not drilled all the way through like your line post. So your tongue may be too long and you may end up having to cut an inch or two off the end of it for that rail to slide in and fit up and look nice against your post. Once you've got five or six of these posts laid out on this fence with the rails in, the, in place, now you can come back and you can start digging the 10 inch by 10 inch round hole and start filling them, getting ready to fill them with concrete. Okay, you'll have, you'll see where we've used bracing. You're gonna brace those posts to where they're basically vertically plumb. Now that's a rough fence in this situation, so you don't have to spend a lot of detail trying to get everything perfect because it's supposed to look rustic. Uh, so basically, you'll get that plumb, you'll screw that brace in so that it holds it there. You've got your hole dug underneath and you'll fill that hole with concrete. And as long as you've got two or three or four posts ahead of you, that already have the split rails in them, then you can come along and you can start bracing and filling 
the bases with concrete, like say, about 10 inches by 10 inch diameter. Our post system is designed to have the steel going in the ground, and then you will have about a 10 inch concrete cap at the top of that steel post that the, the wood post is gonna sit down right into the concrete at the top. Now the wood post is gonna have a couple of clips that will actually set in and lock into that concrete as it dries. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. You're looking for a hole down there at the base, all you're digging is a hole that's gonna be about 10 inches deep and about 10 inches in diameter. So you're gonna put about a gallon worth of, one gallon can worth of concrete in each hole. Now if it's bigger than that because it's sandy or it's less than that because it's rocky, it's okay. You just want that reinforcement of that little bit of concrete at the top. Now where the major savings come on this, where the, especially time savings, is you're not having to dig a hole eight, 10 inches round, two, two and a half feet deep in the ground and then filling the whole thing with concrete. That is the standard procedure for doing fences. Now, two things happen with that. Number one, your post is gonna rot off right at the top of the concrete, generally in about 10 or 15 years. Uh, that does not happen because no part of the wood post is underground. So it never rots off, it's gonna last forever. And it saves you all of that time of digging that hole and it saves you all of that money of filling that hole back up with concrete and mixing that concrete and packing that heavy bucket of concrete over to the hole. This is a much simpler and much faster way to, than much easier on your body, way to put in a decorative fence around your house, around your property.